I like this future prospect of getting everyone to, mm -hmm. to be your eyes, your eyes on, on the aliens or your eyes on the anomalies. Yeah, if it's a true anomaly and it's as rare as we think it is, right now for all the cases coming in, it seems to be less than 2% of those cases from good DOD reports, less than 2% after a careful analysis seem to be anomalous. We're going to need an awful lot of help. Well, let's, wait, let's, let me unpack that. So of all the reports, what you're saying is 98% are explainable apparently not by the person who made the report, because otherwise they wouldn't have reported it. After careful analysis. Like, like, all, like my fellow astronomers. Like we know what weather phenomena does. We know a lot of things, clouds, yep. you know. So I've, I've seen things with like, wow, if I didn't have the background that I do in meteorology and in night sky phenomena, I would be totally calling that in to mm -hmm. the government, to whatever level of the government would take interest. So now given that, you say about 2% remain unexplained after all of your analysis? Yeah, so we've closed about 40% of the cases, about 57%, we don't have enough good data, scientific quality data to do a careful analysis. But, but they're, they're still open. Those they're cases. still open. We are always looking for additional data. That's when he said not corroborate. closed, that means open. Oh, is that okay, right? Yeah, but not closed mean. It's a great point though, because some people think that we just close a case when we don't have the data. See? We're always looking for more data <laughs> <No>. though. <laughs> Breakthrough technology, right? Is that a catch-22 in a way? Because if you're looking at something, and trying to determine if it's so advanced that it technically meets the definition of breakthrough technology. But if you don't know what it is, how do you get that it's a breakthrough? And That's easy, because it, it behaves in ways that no known laws of physics would allow. And so that takes you outside of your zone of awareness. I think I asked him. It, so we <laughs> actually, <laughs> we're not quite as picky, so we're not requiring known, breaking the known laws of physics. We're just going past, well past the bounds of our engineering. So for example, we're not assuming that it can travel faster than the speed of light. We're just saying if it's in the lower atmosphere and it's going Mach 35, that's very interesting to us. Maybe physically possible, but the engineering would really be outlandish. But if it's doing something that you don't understand it's doing, it technically could be breakthrough technology it could be. because yeah. it's doing oh, something yeah. that we and don't have. We and I would want, do. depending on, to know what that is yeah. and to protect it. That's what I'd want it to do. <laughs> exactly. Oh, by the way, I read the full, I don't know if it's still the one used, the, the quoted description of what a UAP is and the government's response to it. It's something like, a UAP is anything that's unidentified and, uh, and anomalous that could pose a threat to our military bases or operations. And I thought, no, that could pose a threat to any of us. Well, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. care about you, yeah. yes, but you're the freaking military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're supposed to protect us. And yeah. you've got guns. We, we don't. Actually, we have a fighting chance. No, we don't. Well, I guess, no, right. I got no, no, it's America. Everybody's got guns. They have missiles. Okay. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Get your arsenal straight here. Exactly. America. America. <laughs> so tell me again your, your ongoing statistics on these reports. Where are you now, percentage wise? Yeah, we have closed about 40% of our cases. Case closed. Yep. Yes. Yep. We understand what they are, mm -hmm. right? About 57% are unresolved. And so those are in our active archive, always looking for that enriching data. Mm -hmm. And about 2% are unresolved. Unresolved. And unresolved but means- Continuing analysis. They're still, they're mysterious. You can't explain them. Yep. You're waiting for some better data or some deeper understanding of what's going on that you might not have yourself. Right. And we're using those to- to guide our hypotheses that will help us um, decide how to tune our sensors when we put them in the field, tell us what to look for as we jump back into that scientific method. And how long will you keep a case like that open? It is, do you, We're never is, gonna close it until we resolve it. Really? Yeah. And by the way, I, I wanna emphasize what you just said. When we explore the universe, if we're just exploring not knowing anything, you, just, you throw in some sensors, just tell me what you got. Once it makes a detection of some kind, however mysterious, the next round, we're gonna focus on that. Yep. We're gonna say, we, now that we have, this, it's over here, it's got this spectral type, let's put in a special spectral analyzer for just that, and that way you can hone in. More, more sophisticated with, sensors. Exactly, yep. on what would otherwise be just a, a survey of what could be out there. Exactly, Yeah. yep. As an example of a couple of those cases that merit further analysis that are helping us refine our hypotheses, there are a few triangles that have been seen by local law enforcement. These are glowing triangles in the in sky. In this case, a uh, very, very black triangle, uh, triangular prism. So it looks like a pie slice hovering 
about the size of a Prius, about 40 to 60 meters away. So as the officer was driving up to investigate underneath a glowing orb, which I'll get to those in a second. (laughs) (laughs) I am so afraid right now. (laughs) Are we... I want a bunker. Can I get a bunker for Christmas? <laughs> I'm worried enough about the damn triangle. Not <laughs> like a, it's below a <laughs> Okay. All right. Now I'm a little, now so, I'm scared. Okay, go. He slammed on his brakes and this thing the size of a Prius, blacker than black, reared up 45 degrees and then shot up into the sky faster than anything he'd ever seen. Mm-hmm. And as it was leaving his sight, it shot out red and blue fireworks, flares, so bright it lit up the inside of his vehicle. He didn't see any propulsion, no wind, Mm -hmm. didn't hear anything over the sound of his own vehicle. And you have more than one of these sightings? We have a few others, one from local law enforcement, some from the- He was not able to get a picture. No, I thought- thought, No dash cam, unfortunately. Mm. How unfortunate. Yes, Uh, that's our luck. They've got got chest cams, Yeah, you know. Yeah, but- You gotta give all of law enforcement UAP cams. Right. So we're working Very on, disappointed on giving kids. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I am getting You're it. on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're on a roll. We got to equip folks. You're absolutely well, right. I, I am so disappointed here. Yeah. Yeah. So there have been cases, triangles. There have been cases of large orbs seen hovering a few Why didn't feet. the officer turn on their forward dash cam? In this case, he slammed on his brakes. It happened almost instantaneously, and he was terrified. He didn't know he, what was he happening. He knew enough to notice it right. and respond by putting on his he brakes. He couldn't just get the... Uh, Pull over, please. You couldn't do that? <laughs> you can't do that? I throw a gum wrapper out and I get that. Yeah. I'm so, just saying, yeah. he had enough time to think about it, put on his brakes. If I see a triangle prism, I'm I'm photographing it. I know, but it's out of fear, maybe. Like People, it, people are skeptical because they don't want to confront but, something they don't understand. In this case, I don't think he was skeptical. He was terrified for his life. And so he was just getting back to a safe position. That's what that was. Did so he go in judge. reverse? He did. 100 miles an hour backwards. While on the phone with his sergeant the whole time. On the phone, yeah. going backwards. Yeah. He, he can't terrified. stop and take a picture? I, I don't think that's what your training guy. tells you. <laughs> Give me this guy's name and badge number. You're gonna get, I, want a, I want his badge number right now. <laughs> I'm not sure that'll go He's well out. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there was a floating orb thing. Glowing floating orbs. In that same region of the country, a couple of law enforcement officers had seen glowing orbs a few hundred feet above the ground, a few miles away. In one of these instances, wait, wait. He, if it's a few miles away, how do they know it was a few hundred feet above the ground? He was estimating based on height above trees. This is four inches lines. above Marty's Deli. Yes, that's what this <laughs> sounds that, that's like. That's exactly <laughs> right. Okay, all right. That's exactly right. right. What part of the country was this? Uh, we'd rather not say. Okay, as that's we're fine. conducting our investigations, that's fine. we Dude, don't want to. Buy I'm us taking today. a vacation. You got to tell me where because I am not going there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, how precisely do you intersect either law enforcement or the public as a supplier of resources to them? Yeah, right now we're- Because you're not giving out kits yet, okay? Right, we're in the mode where we're gonna be providing a few kits to primarily federal law enforcement so that as they're conducting their normal job, if they come across the UAP, they'll be able to gather quality data for us. For the most- So this would be like a little black box, you know, break seal in emergency (laughs) for the alien. Well, we're, we're hoping that they're going to use it more often, maybe for their law enforcement responsibilities that so that they're well, well-practiced and good. well-versed in it. We Very don't want good. them just to use it once. Uh-huh. And the primary role for us, though, is the analysis of the data. So they'll be able to provide whatever data they have. We will then go through a long checklist of other places we can get data, like FAA radars, for example, other sources of imagery. By the way, how do you define a hot spot? Like, how many things have to happen, what pattern of life has to happen or frequency of something where you say that's a hot spot? So we've been hesitant to define hot spots at this point now because we don't know that we can get past the bias that we have, our collection bias. And so we're gonna be working with some statisticians as we're moving more sensors out and getting data from the public to assess the noise in that data and then we'll look at defining hot spots. So collection bias, fascinating term, I love it. It seems to me one of those would be a person's expectation to see something once they heard that other people have seen it. Yep. And then they will interpret something that might have otherwise been, have a simple explanation, but they're shocked into joining the crowd. Mm-hmm. Is that like a form of confirmation bias in a way? Yeah, I would imagine so, yeah. Right, no, because it's there was some fascinating case where there was a zoo where a leopard had escaped and they put everyone on alert for the leopard and they got like, dozens of sightings across the city, and then they finally found that the leopard was asleep behind a door and never left the the zoo. (laughs) 